In this video, we're going to take a look at rendering. Now, rendering is the process of drawing all of the elements of our scene into a 2D image. It's going to combine all of our texturing, our lighting, and all of our models into a final representation. Rendering is also going to take that information and send it to your CPU or GPU for final calculations. Rendering can be a really intensive process. Maya has several different types of renderers. We have the software renderers and we have hardware renderers. The software renderers include the Maya software, which is just the native rendering package that Maya comes with. And then we have the third party rendering, Mental Ray. Mental Ray is a more advanced renderer than Maya, and therefore we can get a lot more precision and detail using the Mental Ray renderer. To render an image inside of Maya, we can go up and just choose the Render Current Frame icon. Once I click on that, Maya will calculate and render an image. Currently, we're set to the Mental Ray renderer. We can choose a different rendering type by clicking on that in the drop-down window and then choosing a different renderer. Now this is a very simplistic scene so when I re-render this using Maya software we don't really see too much of a difference. A few slight changes there. Maya also has the ability to do hardware rendering. When we do hardware rendering it's all relying on your graphics processor. So this is going to send the rendering information directly to your GPU, and the GPU will calculate that. We can do hardware rendering through our render current frame options. We can also change the renderer in the viewport and go to a different type of hardware rendering. We have high quality rendering, and we have viewport 2.0 rendering. Now, Viewport 2.0 is the more advanced renderer of these two. I'm going to choose this, and it will take a second there to load all of the textures into the graphics processor, the graphics memory. And now, in Viewport 2.0 mode, it, we get a nicer representation of our models. Now, this is actually rendering in real time. And this is a great advantage of using Viewport 2.0 is that it can give us instant feedback. As where we saw before when I was rendering with Mental Ray, it took a little while just to get to a single frame. Here, we're actually seeing the final output. But with Viewport 2.0, we cannot use all of the really advanced tools. But it does offer some pretty great stuff. We'll just look at the simple options that it has here. So with Viewport 2.0, I'm gonna open the options. This is going to bring up the hardware renderer settings. So when you see Maya referring to hardware rendering or viewport 2.0, it's actually the same thing. But the major difference between the two is viewport 2.0 is showing us the render inside of the viewport. But when we talk about hardware rendering, we're actually going to render as a background process. This will allow us to stay in Maya and continue to work while we're telling the hardware of our computer to render out a bunch of frames, okay, or render out an animation. Inside of here, we can change a couple of these options to improve the quality of our image or the quality of our render. And the first one we'll take a look at, anti-aliasing. Let's just expand that. Currently, it's turned off. Now, the anti-aliasing is going to affect the lines that we see in our model. So right now where my mouse is, we can see kind of dotted lines. It looks kind of jagged. We also see that on the edge of our building. Anti-aliasing will go through and smooth those lines out. Let's turn that on. And we'll turn multi-sampling on as well. And now when we come back here and, and look in our viewport, we can see that those edges have gone away. We can change the amount of samples to make the edges look smoother or rougher. So if I go back down to a sample count of one, it's almost like it's turned off. And I'll just return to a four. There we go. And so we get a nice smooth edge there. 
Next, we have screen space ambient occlusion. Ambient occlusion is a shadowing type effect that simulates where light gets occluded. So we see this a lot in the corners of objects or in cracks and crevices. This is, these are little black areas that light just can't get to. It's basically a shadow, but typically it's a shadow that's local to a model or a result of two objects coming into contact with one another. So for instance, like this building sitting on this concrete slab. Let's turn the ambient occlusion on. And pretty drastic difference there. We can really see a much greater look in kind of the realism of our model. We get shadows all along the bottom there, and we're also getting some nice fine shadows happening up there in the windows. And we can zoom in a little bit. And I'll turn it off, and we'll turn it back on. You can see all of that shadow work that's happening inside of there. Again, that's just where the light is being occluded. Now, while we're zoomed in here, too, I want you to look at our textures there. And what we're actually seeing here is another benefit of Viewport 2.0, that it can display bump and normal maps. And that's why our brick texture looks as if it actually has texture. It looks like it's the individual bricks are kind of lifted off of the surface. At any point in time, if we were to update those maps or the clarity isn't very good, we can choose the rollout here for bake resolution and increase that texture resolution or reload all of our texture. So between the two of these here, we can affect the quality of any images that we load up. We can also use motion blur, which is typically a pretty expensive process, in our hardware render view or in our viewport 2.0. We don't have anything here that's going to move, so we'll just move off of that. Then jump to gamma correction. And gamma correction, let's turn this on, will force the color space into an acceptable range. Now it looks like it's blown out, but what's happening here is that we're moving out of linear color space. Now with gamma turned on at 2.2, this is actually the normal color values that we typically see. The computer, because it's a computer, can actually display values of greater intensities. And that's actually what gives things a computer graphics kind of a look because the color values it's using are either extreme or in one direction or the other. They're extremely high or extremely low. By setting the gamma, we're restricting those values and we're kind of tempering those down and getting the color of all of our textures, all of our lighting, all of our geometry, it's getting all of that back into a normalized range. I'm going to turn that off just so that we can see this here a little bit better. And let's close that option and zoom out. Now, what we can also do with Viewport 2.0 is see our lights, and we can actually see the effect of lights. We get there first by choosing 7 on the keyboard. So now I go to 7 and everything goes black. Well, this is because I don't have a light in my scene. So I'll choose Create. Lights, directional light, and I'll hit E to bring up the manipulator. And let's go to wireframe here real quick. Let's scale this light way up to see what direction we're in. And we'll go back to seven there. And now we can get that interactivity of our light in the scene. I'm going to switch back to our software renderer and I'll choose render. And now we're in Maya software. And just to take a look in our render view here, what we can do again is switch between these, but we can also use this to test various renders that we're doing. So we might be looking at the lighting or we're looking at the texturing and we're just doing different iterations. Once I do a render, I can save that render by choosing the keep image icon at the top of the screen and that will save that image. And let's go back, let's make a change to our scene here. And we'll take that intensity up to like three. That should really add a lot of light. And let's hit render again. Okay. And now I can scroll at the bottom to see the two different snapshots that I have of that render. Let's move our window off to the side just slightly there. We also have 
as part of our rendering package that works not only with Maya software, but works with Maya hardware, as well as Mental Ray, is the IPR renderer. This stands for Interactive Photorealistic Rendering. If I choose IPR, which the icon is located right here, we also have the IPR menu right there. I'll choose IPR, and it's going to go through and render the image again. Then it will tell me to select a region to begin fine-tuning. Now the whole purpose of the IPR renderer is to allow us to make adjustments to complex things and see the results of that instantly. So there are lots of things that the IPR renderer supports that Viewport 2.0 does not. So I'll draw a region, and the IPR will instantly update. And now if I move my light, we'll see that it picks up those changes and renders it pretty quickly. Now again, we don't have a very complex light here, but the IPR supports a lot more complex stuff. So we can do things like depth map shadows and ray tracing and see the results here pretty quickly.